As the world becomes increasingly more digitally driven, online, and interconnected, the healthcare sector is undergoing a digital transformation to adapt to these changes. We sat down with Andrea Fletcher, the first ever Chief Digital Strategy Officer at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, to learn more about the importance behind this push towards modernization in the healthcare sector. If you enjoy this interview, please like, share, subscribe, and turn on notifications. And if you're interested in being interviewed, email summer at executivemosaic.com. Hello, and welcome to Executive Mosaic's video interview series. I'm Summer Mayan, and here to speak with me today is Andrea Fletcher, Chief Digital Strategy Officer and Director of the Digital Service at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Andrea, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Summer. I'm excited to chat with you. So to set the scene for our conversation, I'd like to start with digital transformation, which has become somewhat of a buzzword in the public sector. I'm curious, in your view, what exactly is digital transformation and why is it so important right now? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the federal government in particular and governments in general, a lot of what we do is collect information from people and have them sign up for programs. And I, I often, since I work at the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, I often think about how my grandparents signed up for Medicare which would have been in person at a social security office filling out a paper form. And that is very different from what my parents will likely do and how I will likely sign up. Um, the expectations of the American people is now that they can go to a website and use an online form um, to sign up for Medicare or to fill out information for the government. The DMV is a common example of things that people want to be online and available, make payments, um, you know, pay that parking ticket. But in, in, in this instance, you know, apps, people want to download an app and be able to access their data instantly or to be able to do it online or on their phone or tablet or whatever device they have, which is very different in how we provide government services. So when I think about digital transformation, I think about the services and the programs that we run as government agencies and how those are moving into an online world or ecosystem and how we are not just taking the paper form and putting it on the internet, but really thinking about the processes and how people engage with different government services. I also think digital transformation in terms of the agency inside and how we are organizing ourselves as a, as a large organization and the work that we do and how we're becoming more efficient or automating different processes. Um, and, and a lot of this has to do with the people that we hire. So hiring in more technical talent, rethinking and redesigning the way that we do contracting or procurement. Um, and, and really just overall looking at our enterprise and the work that we do and how we can use technology to do it better, to be more efficient and more effective in the delivery of the services that we provide to the American people. So, Andrea, looking at this conversation within the context of CMS, can you talk about the work you're doing mm -hmm. in your role as the first ever chief digital strategy officer to enable this digital transformation within CMS? It's a fancy title. <laughs> I've only had it for a couple of months. But uh, yeah, so I lead a digital service team. So we are, um, we, we think about digital service in, in two ways. We're a team of technologists who work on digital services. So how we're providing, again, services on in an online or digital format. Um, and then also my team is here on a tour of service. So we're similar to the U.S. Digital Service at the White House. We're actually an agency team and we collaborate with them a lot. We have people from the U.S. Digital Service. I'm actually former USCS. Um, many people on my team are. And so people come in on a tour of service and they bring in skills from traditionally the private sector or other parts of government um, into the into our agency. So into CMS um, to rethink and like, you know, kind of just like uh, how we're approached differently, how we're doing the work that we do. So, you know, we'll, we'll take engineers from all of the big Silicon Valley companies and they'll take a look at some of our, our systems, which, you know, have been around for a while because it's the federal government and, and think about how do we modernize them? How do we, um, how do we approach things in a, in a different way, in a more uh, private sector uh, approach to building software? And Andrea, I understand software is a major component of your work at CMS. Yeah. 
Can you talk about CMS's software initiatives and specifically open source programs as well? What kind of progress are you seeing there and what challenges still remain? Yeah, so um, we are claiming that we are standing up the first open source program office in the federal government. Um, no one has corrected us yet, and I think we've talked to pretty much everyone about this. Um, I'm particularly passionate about open source software. I worked at in, in the open source uh, software ecosystem previously, and it I think it's an area where it really uh, – kind of opens the space for innovation, also improvements in cybersecurity, um, because we actually already rely a lot on open source libraries. And so CMS is standing up this OSPO, is what the acronym OSPO, Open Source Program Office. Um, it's the first in the government. We're trying it out. We already have a lot of really fantastic open source programs and applications. So we have some of the largest APIs that are, are open source and Blue Button 2.0 and Data at the Point of Care. Um, and really just kind of pushing these programs forward in how we release our software and our code to the greater healthcare ecosystem. So if you think about a lot of the work that CMS does is collecting data from, you know, hospitals or health insurance providers, payers, different, different parts of the healthcare ecosystem, drug companies, right? Um, so how are we doing that in a way that is um, more transparent, but also really providing them um, better access to the code that we've already developed. And so we've been doing a lot of work around this over the past year. We're kind of pushing this out more over the next couple of years uh, to see what it kind of looks like for an agency to, to have policies around inbounding and outbounding code. And what does it look like to have templates for bug, you know, bugs and pull requests and bug reports and taking a really kind of hard developer approach to uh, building an open source community around the work that CMS does. Just to clarify, can you explain what exactly open source is and why it's such a momentous time right now to be opening the first ever open source office in the government? Uh, yeah, so open source software specifically is what I'm talking about. So it's software where the code is released publicly. Um, so typically this happens on GitHub or other types of repositories. And it allows others um, in the space to reuse and recycle our code, as well as contribute and participate in the code development process. It's actually been around for about 20 years. So the open source policy that uh, that the U.S. government has uh, in the ecosystem uh, above us, all around us, uh, has been around for quite a while. And CMS has had an open source policy for, for many years, as well as HHS, Health and Human Services. So... It's, it's, I wouldn't say it's a momentous time because the policy has been sitting there. It's just been waiting for somebody to come and pick it up. And we've decided to pick it up uh, and, and see what we can do with it. So what other programs and challenges are you most passionate about right now? I'm really passionate. I've become really passionate lately about customer experience and the way that we are engaging with the people that we serve. So, you know, making sure that when somebody comes to a website to, you know, again, fill out a form or sign up for something that it's the most delightful experience. Um, I don't think people often associate government websites with, you know, excellent user experience and, and are excited about it. And how do we, how do we change that? How do we make it so we are you know, building some of the most usable and accessible websites to for the American people. Um, I'm really passionate about accessibility because particularly with Medicare and Medicaid, many of the populations that we serve are, you know, using screen readers or have cognitive or visual disabilities or um, speak languages other than English. And so how are we making sure that the tools that we're providing them, they can use? that it's in plain language and it's easy to understand and accessible um, and available in multiple languages um, and, and a delight. Uh, I keep, I always use the word delight because it's just not associated with government websites. You know, you think painful or horrible or, oh my God, that took me forever. And, and I hope, you know, that in the future, somebody sits down to sign up for healthcare and, you know, they have their kids sitting on their lap and dinner's in the oven and they only have a couple minutes to fill this form out and they get it done and they move on with their day. And it is a wonderful experience rather than I think what we often feel, which is, you know, oh, my gosh, this is so stressful. <laughs> that sounds like a welcome change. Yeah. <laughs> 
And lastly, which emerging technologies do you think could be most impactful in the healthcare sector in the next few years? Yeah, I mean, we talk a lot about um, FHIR or FHIR and healthcare interoperability and data standards. I think those are pretty basic ones that it would be incredible to see really um, widespread and, and adopted in the healthcare ecosystem and helping drive us towards uh, a system where we are able to share data more easily and we are able to access our information more easily. And it's a little, it just feels more organized is how I describe it. Um, but in, in general, I think a lot of the things that we need to do in the, in the healthcare ecosystem in particular is not that exciting. And, and it can be, it can be hard to resist the temptation of like big fancy things. Um, but a lot of what we need in order to do something like artificial intelligence or large language models, we need to have our data in order. We need to have really good, well-structured data in order to be able to use some of those, you know, emerging technologies that could be even bigger game changes. But right now, I, I actually think that, you know, getting data standards in place, as it sounds boring, and, and getting interoperability layers in place is, is more impactful and will amplify some of the other technology that's coming down the pipeline. Awesome. Well, Andrea, thank you so much for your time and for all the work you're doing at CMS. Thank you. It was so great chatting with you.